Hello, my rubber hearts. We opened this season by turning MDR curves into real cure times. Then we protected our process window with the Mooney Scorch. Today we are going to tackle a decision that quietly determines almost everything that follows in compounding, testing and production. How to choose the right cure system. Sulfur, peroxide, a hybrid or something completely different. This is not a light choice. It starts with the polymer's chemistry, then runs through your filler system, the silane you picked, the application service life, regulatory constraints, even whether your plan can do a post-cure. Let's build the logic together, the way a working technologist actually makes the call. Start with the backbone. If the rubber has plenty double bonds, sulfur curing is naturally at home. Natural rubber, SBR, BR and the usual tire elastomers love sulfur because you can build flexible networks with polysulfide links that handle dynamic strain beautifully. If the backbone is mostly saturated, free radicals from peroxides do the heavy lifting. EPDM is a classic example, as are EVM, HNBR and many thermoplastic volcanizates that rely on peroxide in dynamic volcanization. Some polymers come with their own playbooks. Chloroprene cures primarily with metal oxides, usually zinc oxide or magnesium oxide, assisted by theorea accelerators. Butyl rubber is so lightly unsaturated that we often switch to phenolic resin cure or to halobutyl grades that respond faster with zinc oxide and sulfur donors. Fluoroelastomers split into two families. Bisphenol cures for certain copolymers that carry cure sites and peroxide cures for grades designed to cross-link through radical chemistry with the help of coagents. Silicone lives in its own universe with peroxide, platinum addition, or condensation cures depending on volatility and extraction limits. Now bring in the filler system because it can veto your first instinct. Carbon black is easy with sulfur and generally fine with peroxide, but very acidic blacks can soak up peroxide radicals and slow or distort the cure unless you neutralize or adjust coagents. Silica demands real attention. If you are running a sulfur cure in a silica thread or any silica-filled non-polar rubber, you usually pair the silica with a sulfur-bearing silane like TSPT or TSPD. Those silanes couple filler to polymer and feed sulfur into the network, which is perfect for sulfur systems, but they do not play with peroxides. If you are curing with peroxide, you need a peroxide-friendly silane typically a vinyl silane or a metacrylate silane, so the radical chemistry can graft across that bridge. You can also use mercapto silanes, but you must manage scorch, because mercapto groups can be very active. This is one of those hidden tripwires. The wrong silane turns a beautiful formulation into a stubborn undercured slab, and it wasn't the peroxide's fault. It was the coupling chemistry. Coagents belong in the same conversation. With peroxide cures, coagents like trialyl cyanurate or zinc diacrylate increase crossing density and raise modulus, improve heat aging, and in HNBR, they are the difference between OK and excellent compression set at high temperature. In sulfur cures, you tune the crosslink type by moving from conventional to semi-efficient or efficient systems as you raise accelerator to sulfur ratios. That shifts you from long, flexible polysulfide links that shine in dynamic fatigue to short monosulfide links that hold up under heat but feel stiffer and less forgiving. If you see the words reversion resistance in a specification for NR, you already know what to do. Either go efficient with sulfur donors and anti-reversion additives or jump to peroxide if the application and polymer allow it. Let's map typical polymers to cure systems and give you the why in each case. Natural rubber and SBR are sulfur first because dynamic fatigue, cut growth resistance and hysteresis balance are excellent with polysulfide rich networks. You can run peroxide on NR or SBR when the heat aging and compression set dominate, but you will trade away some tear resistance and fatigue life. 
EPDM is usually peroxide because its backbone is saturated and only the diene provides unsaturation. Peroxide networks give far better heat aging and compression set than sulfur on EPDM. And you avoid reversion. If you must use sulfur in EPDM for specific properties, it is usually a controlled, efficient sulfur donor system with attention to scorch. NBR does both. Sulfur gives good low temperature flexibility and economics. Peroxide gives better heat and oil resistance and superior compression set for seals in hot oils, especially if you choose the right coagent package. HNBR is a peroxide favorite because hydrogenation removes most double bonds. Peroxide plus zinc deacrylate coagents build tough networks for automotive under the hood service. Butyl, on the other hand, prefers resin cure when you want low permeability and heat resistance, while halobutyl grades respond well to zinc oxide and sulfur donors in tires and pharmaceutical stoppers. Chloroprene cures with metal oxides. If you have used ETU, you know why it works and also why many plants are migrating to safer alternatives due to toxicological profiles. Fluoroelastomers are chosen by cure chemistry as much as by base polymer. If you need very low compression set and fluid resistance in fuels and oils, peroxide curable FKM with proper coagent is a workhorse, but it almost always needs a hot post cure to finish the network and drive off volatiles. Bisphenol cures are common for certain architectures, giving excellent sealing in aggressive media with good compression set. Silicone is almost a cure system case study. Peroxide for general use with a mandatory post cure when outgassing or taste and odor matter. Platinum addition for medical and food where extractables must be minimal. Condensation for RTVs where room temperature cure and adhesion are the priorities. Applications and service conditions either confirm your pick or force a change. If the part must live at elevated temperature for years, peroxide networks generally keep their properties better because CC and CO crosslinks do not unzip the way polysulfides can under heat. If the part sees high dynamic strain, flex and crack growth, sulfur-rich networks in NR or SBR handle cyclic fatigue like champs. If compression set at 150 Celsius is a pass-fail gate for a seal, peroxide-cured HNBR or FKM will save your design record. If the compound must meet low extractables or taste and odor standards in medical or food, platinum cured silicone takes the front seat because peroxide byproducts can migrate and sulfur chemistry can leave residues. If you are bonding to metal, check your adhesive system and primer chemistry because some bond systems assume sulfur network formation while others are happier with peroxide and coagent rich surfaces. If your part has to be non-conductive, watch carbon black loading in any cure system. If you need static dissipation or conductivity, you will likely push reinforcing blacks above the percolation and then tune cure to hit both electrical and mechanical targets. There are also practical plan considerations that quietly dominate real decisions. Do you have the ability to post cure parts at a controlled high temperature to drive off peroxide byproducts or complete FKM crosslinking? If not, choose a cure system and polymer that meets specs straight out of the press. Do you have nitrosamine restrictions on accelerators? That immediately narrows your sulfur accelerator choices and may push you towards safe accelerator packages or towards peroxide if regulations are tight. Are you molding thick sections? Peroxide can be wonderful in thick parts due to true cure and compression set, but you must control exotherm and add time for heat penetration. If scorch safety on the line is marginal, sulfur gives you a rich toolbox of retarders like PVI to widen the safe window, while peroxides demand careful selection of grade and handling temperature so the cure does not start in the mixer. If color and aesthetics matter, sulfur systems can bloom depending on accelerator and wax choices, while peroxide plus coagents can yellow at high temperature. In silicone, you even choose the cure based on whether a faint peroxide smell after post-cure is acceptable or whether you need a neutral profile of platinum. 
Hybrid systems also deserve a quick word. In general rubber compounds, hybrid means you combine cure chemistries to get a mixed network or to solve a processing problem. Phenolic resin plus sulfur donors in butyl is a long established hybrid. Peroxide plus a small sulfur donor in EPDM can tune dynamic properties and there are resin systems for halogenated rubbers that play alongside metal oxides. The point is not to be clever for its own sake. The point is to use each chemistry for what it does best and to be honest about the compromises it brings. When you strip the decision to its essentials, the flow sounds like this. What does the polymer's chemistry invite? What does the filler system and its surface treatment demand? What does the application punish over years rather than weeks? What does your plant and your regulatory landscape allow you to run safely and repeatedly? If any single answer contradicts the others, fix the contradiction first. Move from conventional sulfur toward efficient sulfur if heat kills you. Move from sulfur to peroxide if compression set is a gatekeeper and dynamic fatigue is mild. Choose platinum and silicon when extractables matter and peroxide when they do not. That is the logic tree that a working technologist follows and once you start hearing it in your head, your system selection stops feeling like a guess and starts sounding like an argument you can win. And that is our deep dive for today, my rubber hearts. In the next episode, we'll take the swelling test out of the textbook and into the lab bench. So crosslink density stops being a mysterious number and starts becoming a lever you can actually pull.